Netflix is the gold standard when it comes to streaming, and it's in large part due to the incredible effort put in its technology. In this video, we will look behind the fancy red and black design and focus on four key elements of the Netflix structure to understand how Netflix makes streaming possible around the globe. My name is Kevin, I make video on tech behind products and software engineering, so like the video and subscribe for more. Before a user can start a show, Netflix needs to store the content in their database, but there is a first obvious problem. Straight from the movie producer, one episode of a show takes a lot of space, so Netflix needs to use video, sound and text encoding to significantly reduce the content size. The encoding pipeline at Netflix takes the video and breaks it down into multiple small chunks of 30 seconds. Each chunk is then encoded and reassembled into a smaller file. The result is then stored and ready to be streamed. To do so, Netflix leverage more than 40 media processing tools covering every media type. The biggest problem at Netflix is not the encoding itself, but encoding at scale. Keep in mind that Netflix receives a lot of new content every day, and a slow encoding process will create delay and degrade the user experience. To be more efficient, Netflix uses microservices for encoding. A different microservice is used for each of the four media types. An ASG, or auto scaling group, is a group of four microservices, one for each media type, and they are all hosted on AWS. AWS ability to auto scale helps with the scaling problem during binge encoding sessions where demand is high. The auto scaling itself is not enough to keep the cost low, so Netflix also makes each ASG more efficient by making the encoding process asynchronous and using priority queue for the messages coming, so the most important tasks are completed first. Netflix has an analytics team used to make business-oriented decisions. The process of collecting data for analytics uses a data pipeline made of three main components, the producer, the keystone pipeline, and the consumer. The producers are all the event generators. In this case, we have Kafka producers and HTTP clients. Kafka is a distributed stream processing platform, and a Kafka producer is used to send data into topics. On the other end, a Kafka consumer receives data from topics. So, events from Kafka producers and clients are all sent to the Keystone pipeline. The Keystone pipeline is made of multiple components. The main ones are the fronting tier and the internal router service, IRS for short. The fronting tier receives all the events from both Kafka producer and clients, then send them to the internal router service. The IRS is implemented as a SAMSA job that runs in Docker containers, and each SAMSA job is responsible to send the stream of data from the fronting tier to the proper consumer. The consumers are Kafka Consumer, Elasticsearch, and S3. In the case of S3, data in the IRS are first sent into intermediary S3 storage, then after 15 minutes of data collection, the JSON store files are cleaned and sent to S3 system, which will merge all the separate files, and each S3 storage will store about 2 hours of clean and exploitable data ready to be analyzed. At Netflix, there is no single model that drives all recommendations, but rather a set of techniques that are aligned on their goal to increase member satisfaction. The recommendation system utilizes a two-tier row-based ranking system where each row covers a topic and ranks the strongest recommendations on the left and the strongest recommended topic is on the top. We don't have all the details of the recommendation algorithms, but we know that Netflix uses a variety of rankers. Personalized video ranking is a filter used to sort the catalog by tag, like K-drama or reality TV. Top end video ranker is an algorithm that uses some metrics and inputs like user preference to generate the top ranking video for a topic or a profile. Trending noun ranker use short term events like Christmas or Valentine's Day to rank the most trending show at the moment. Continue to watch ranker look at the content that has not been completely consumed 
and ranks them by what is the most likely to be watched again. Video Similarity Ranker use an item-to-item -item similarity matrix to return the items a profile is likely to enjoy based on what has been consumed before. Netflix will use all this algorithm to generate topic-based row. Then, from the thousands of rows generated by the rankers, a machine learning model will be used to create a page with the row containing the video most likely to be watched. Netflix uses about 17,000 servers spread across 158 countries to store and deliver content. After a show has been encoded, it's sent to multiple server locations, also known as CDN. Having CDNs all over the world serves two main purposes. The first one is content availability, to make sure that each content can be played at any time. And to do so, Netflix makes sure to store multiple copies of each content on different CDN. The second purpose is latency. The closer a user is to a CDN, the faster the streaming is, so the user experience is fluid and consistent. I hope this video gave you enough information to better understand some of the technology behind Netflix and it serve as an entry point for you to dive deeper into each point we discuss. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this and see you in the next one.